hi everybody <laughs> welcome to may uh it's rainy today but it's almost summer and they can't wait to get outside and tara's laughing at me but i don't I, care i love your we call them at work warm welcomes warm Just like, welcomes you're like roll into the meeting and it, it always catches me by surprise and it always <laughs> puts a smile on my face right it's, it's fun because we've been talking for like 10 minutes but now i'll say hi and welcome <laughs> to everybody because we're we're recording uh well hi to the people that aren't here either hopefully you're you know enjoying the recording of, of this meetup so uh we'll get started i'm going to present our agenda and uh see how things go this evening. We're going to be a little informal just because the, the topic is, is kind of informal. We don't have one specific uh, one specific uh, presenter or anything tonight. So uh, these tend to be a little all over the place as far as uh, who's talking when and what we're doing. But we're going to talk about reels tonight. Uh, we have a few people who are going to show some pieces from an earlier reel that they reimagined or recreated, uh, knowing what they know now. Uh, we'll also take a look at some reels for uh, review or feedback or just to have fun. All right, uh, but before we get there, we are gonna talk about what's new in After Effects. Uh, then we'll do our, our reimagined reels, then reel reviews for anybody who has those. General show and tell uh, or discussion for uh, just whatever if people have questions or something else they want to show off, we could do that. And then we'll talk very briefly about next month's uh, meetup. So first, um, oh, I, I should have changed this. This is actually 18.2 now is the most recent release of After Effects. But the reason I didn't change it is because it's the same thing. It's more bug fixes. But that's that's a good thing uh, because I, I honestly don't mind if After Effects it fixes things that are broken and doesn't always have the, the latest and greatest new things, uh, but the beta is always fun. Uh, but the bug fixes, and again, I should have updated the, pretend this is 18.2 in May 2021. Uh, so there are a couple uh, bug fixes in here. I think the biggest one that um, that uh, annoyed people was the V hotkey getting broken uh, for the selection tool. Um, with the new 3D shortcuts and stuff, I guess some of the mapping didn't work the way people expected it to, so now that's that's uh, fixed again. Um, but a couple of other things like uh, <clears throat> the user presets, libraries, and user videos. Now uh, we use the the correct uh, correct folder. I guess I used the, the wrong folder before. Um, sometimes draft preview would misbehave. Uh, Real time three D draft preview, which if you do a lot of three D, is still kind of a cool thing. And it, uh, I don't do a lot of three D in After Effects, but when I do that kind of catches me off guard because I'm used to it like chugging along and being like really slow and adaptive resolution. Uh, and then this apparently you couldn't uh, pan or it causes panning using the spacebar shortcut not to work in the render queue. I didn't really know you could pan in the render queue. So that's for the people who did know that it's, it's fixed. So, hey, <laughs> but we'll take a look at uh, some reimagined reels and the first one I'm going to show uh, before I get into it is from Hannah, who could not make it here tonight. But we will take a look at uh, at her piece. So hopefully everyone can see her tab from ArtStation. Yes. So for, first we'll take a look at, I think she said this is from 2011. And there's uh, there's no sound on this. so. I believe she said this was uh, Illustrator and Flash, now Animate. <laughs> <laughs> the eyebrows are great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look what Hannah has done with her new skills. And I believe this is Photoshop, Illustrator, Blender, and After Effects. Oh, and this one does have sound, if you can hear it. Thank you. 
Oh, that's great. That well was so done, amazing. Hannah. <laughs> I, I loved, like, especially at the end with all the platforms moving in and out, I was like, oh, that's like so many video games I've played. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I wish he was here to talk about it, but Hannah, good job. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the camera work was very awesome in that. The, the rendering itself, the sound design, which is always a nice touch. Uh, good mix of 2D and 3D. It's, it was really cool. So yay, Hannah. <clears throat> so that was our first one. And that should have hopefully broken the ice. Who would like to go next <laughs> for showing uh, an earlier real piece and a, a newer one? Don't everybody jump at once. <laughs> I see Brian raising his hand. All right. All right. Is this yours just before I? Yep. <laughs> OK, great. Uh, anything you want to tell us before I hit play? Uh, I kind of explained it in the video, just what it was for. It's I've always been fascinated by those crappy drive-in concession stand movies. <laughs> and so for both of these, I was trying to get that old broken film with bad splices and bad sound look and feel. Um, the old one was a long time ago, like 15 years ago. The new one, I'm trying to figure out how to use Cinema 4D, so I'm kind of updating it with that. And it's an actual project that's due in August, so. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at both the before and after in this one video, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Nothing could be better than fresh food that comes straight from the farm. Like candy, popcorn, and ice cold pop. It's all available at the concession stand. What'll it be, kids? Candy and pop and popcorn! Good choice. Did you know the popcorn's organic? They'll own this pair of candy and pop. The concession stand. Pay a visit now for all your fresh snacking needs. Glorious. I really, <clears throat> both of those versions, I really enjoyed. They're so fun. I love the uh, the hot dogs with the smiles, like at, just as they're turning around. Like they're, they're so happy. <laughs> it's so warm. A little bit creepy too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a suggestion. When the dill pickle is on screen, can we have the text say, you'll be dill lighted? Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Very nice. I have to figure out what to do with all that, like how to put it together. I just modeled some food and made it dance and I'll figure it out. Oh, that, that was that's awesome. delightful. <laughs> what are you using for your rigging for your characters? Um, I used the um, bendy limbs rig that EJ did i've tried that's like driving me nuts just trying to rig characters even using mixmo it's like things stretch and bend out of that's hard so it's one of the things i'm trying to figure out but did you like the bendy lens uh plug -in um no but it's better than the other one okay <laughs> <laughs> good point yeah. Honest reviews by Brian. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I loved, actually, the first one I, I really loved, like the cow. That was, <laughs> see that cow just singing the arm with a deep voice. That was great. 
So I, I thought that, that was, was that was my kids too, and that so. was their actual reaction to organic popcorn. So <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That's sick. Well, that was awesome, Brian. Thanks so much for for sharing that. That was great. Sure. And Todd, did you want to go <laughs> next? Put a we link. got the link in here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see, it's got to share the right tab. Anything you'd like to tell us before we? Uh, this was a Halloween spot I did for, I used to work for uh, University Television in, at a, in <coughs> Illinois and at Western. Um, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, that's the, with the, the original Scooby-Doo version type one that I did this way back. Yeah, that one's the, and the, uh, cohort of mine did the text you know we were just trying to get something out really fast and i wanted to redo it with using all the original source footage and updating the text and stuff like that just to see what i could do so i did that about i don't know three three and a half years ago i redid this spot for the heck of it so. all right we'll take a look at your first original version Very nice. Now, which of these should we look at? Oh, this is the VFX breakdown. This up top is the one yeah, to watch? OK. The top one, then. That's me as death, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's it's very. It has the uh, like a lot of the the feel from the first one with uh, clearly updated, um, right. and using the original footage, it all still looks pretty good too. Yeah, that was part of the what I wanted to challenge myself with. Just like okay, use all the original stuff and uh, recreate it. And uh, the university's founded in like eighteen ninety nine, so I was trying to go with mm -hmm. some vintage text and stuff like that in this one. So there's a little break. That kind of shows. Yeah, should we take a look at the breakdown right. here? Using particular and stuff like that. Yeah. Add some it dripping down the blade and the glowing. Wanted to make it uh, still kind of campy for the kids, so you know, not really, <laughs> kind of more pumpkiny orange and, and stuff. But in case anybody was watching, didn't want to freak anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the like anytime you get those breakdowns of just like all the layers that are involved in something that seemingly looks you know pretty simple. It's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So. Well, in, in the first one too, I had you could see. The, I was sitting on a little stool. We just had a makeshift. We were even, we weren't even in our building at the time. We were, had to move out to a dorm while they were redoing the, redoing our studio. But I was sitting on a little green screen on a knee stool. So you could kind of see the edge of that even in your first one. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that stuff just back away. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's uh, <laughs> it's fun. It's not Halloween yet, but right. we'll have to bring it back out. In I didn't have October, to, but I thought it might fit the bill. So, are you going to return to that project in another three years and just have it be your three-year review? <laughs> Maybe I could do some total volumetrics or something like that. And <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I think um, <clears throat> I think you. These are the three that we had for the the reimagined pieces. Unless anyone else here has another one uh, that they'd like to share, I'm just going to assume. Silence means no. Okay. <laughs> so the uh, I've sorry, I have somebody on Discord. Who, the problem with Discord that's, is I don't know me. a real name. That's you. Okay. I was like, somebody <laughs> yeah. gave me a demo reel <laughs> that we were gonna look at. So hi Anna, or is it Anna or Anna? Anna. Anna. Hi. Nice to have you here. Uh, so are you ready for us to take a look at your reel? Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything that you'd like to say about it before we take a look? 
Uh, well, this is just kind of my first reel. It's, I was just pulling together all of the animation clips that I'd done. So I'm just trying to get my foot in the door here. So Awesome. We'll take a look. Let's see. And this is the correct one, right? Yes. Awesome. This Yay. Yay! Thank you for sharing. How do you feel about it? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's always my thing with reels is that if, every time I touch one, I'm like, I just want to get it. I just want it to be done. Like, I don't want to <laughs> work on it anymore. I just want it to be out there. But it's nice. It's um, <clears throat> I, I think the it, it's always nice to have a short reel and under a minute is, is great. And I think you have a you have it edited, edited together in a way that I, I know you don't have very many pieces in there, but it feels cohesive and it feels like it it flows and it's bookended. I like the little rabbit waving at the end after polishing <laughs> everything. So I think it it uh, flows and works really nicely. And there was a question in the chat from Brian. I want to know if you designed the characters too. So um, I designed the the bunny and. Um... <clears throat> The girl, uh, and the 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 little cactus; uh, those are Pokemon. So, but that's got like some really nice sense of timing that you're showing, um, and then just the fact that like you're going with like the traditional two D look. Like, wow, you don't see a whole lot of that <laughs> anymore. And mm -hmm. kudos to you for putting all of that together. Yeah, so this is all done in Photoshop, by the way. Wow. Nice. Not even vector. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> so are these pieces from um, larger? Uh... So um, the bunny one that was for a job I did, I was hired by my dad, actually. Okay. Um, it was Peter Wagner is my dad. Yes, that's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other ones are from personal projects that I'm working on. So. Nice. Is there anything um, that you're still planning on doing with this, or are you just trying to get to the like, put it out there and? Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to trying to get it out there. Um. I think the um, the only thing I would say that I would maybe for sure change on here is uh, having uh, on the either in an open card or an end card, like having your name on there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, just because with, with reels, um, they can get passed around and you don't, especially with a Vimeo, like you don't always know where it's gonna be embedded um, or how it's gonna be seen. So while uh, if you get to put it on your own portfolio site, you get to put your name everywhere and brand it exactly how you want. Uh, it, it's always good to have that in the video itself. So if anybody sees it, they know exactly who it belongs to and who to get a hold of when they wanna hire you for their 2D animation needs. But it's very cool. I, yeah, frame by frame is one of those things that uh, more power to you because that's <laughs> that's a long process and it's tedious and especially working in Photoshop. Do you have um, like either Anim Dessen or uh, Animator Toolbar no. or anything to help with that? Okay. Wow. So <clears throat> you're doing it just with plain old Photoshop is even more impressive too. So. That's so labor intensive. <laughs> Kudos, Anna. <laughs> Yeah, nice weight, nice overlap and follow through and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Good. So really nice work. Thank you. All right. So I think if there's, um, I think that's all I had for reels, unless, uh, let's see, who didn't do anything tonight? Peter, do you have anything to show since you're, you know, your daughter is showing something? 
<laughs> well, I could show something that she also also worked on here. Let me let me just pull something. Yeah, let's take a look. Give me a second to give you a link. So, yeah, and um, while it's you're more of that, uh, that Dusty the Bunny kind of a scene thing, but uh, <laughs> I'll give give you a finished product with it. Um, so, All right. One second. Well, while you're doing that, I'll just put it out to uh, James McKenzie and Jim. If there's anything you would like to show, toss a link in the comments, and we can open it up. If not, hang out and watch too. That's always welcome. Yeah, has anybody else here played around with frame by frame? I mean, just no. coming from <laughs> an animation background, I know how intensive that is, and oof. <laughs> I I know the amount of hours Anna had to have put in for that, and just kudos, girl. <laughs> I bought the Time Lord plugin from Battleaxe, mm. but I haven't really messed with it yet. But it seems like it would be helpful if you were doing that stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but I still haven't played with that because I don't do much frame by frame. Uh, and by much, I mean, like, I think I've done it once. So what I do like about Time Lord, though, is that it's a nice host of things in one. Like, you get, you know, the, the extra buttons in Photoshop to actually do navigation and time and adding and remo removing frames. And then you have a good way of getting that out and into After Effects, too, or Animate, uh, too, uh, to finish things up. So, and I haven't tried his, their, uh, I say his, Battle Axe is more than one person now. Um, I haven't tried their Anubis plugin for exporting. It's, it's cool. Yeah. Um, coming out of After Effects, just to be able to click one button and it just goes and it works and well worth the 20 bucks. <laughs> I'll have to pick that up then, I guess. All right. All right. Peter. So I got my thing on there. And so um, I'll describe what this is. So um, it's, it's for the same client. So she runs a cleaning service and uh, um, so thus Dusty the Bunny. And I thought that was a great name. We kind of designed that, that uh, character. Um, she had a series of commercials she wanted to, to do. And I was trying to save her some money without going the full animation route. <laughs> so I had Anna uh, do some more character design work. And then I animated it in After Effects using uh, the Duick rig. So um, this is uh, um, one of those commercial spots. So we can take a look at that. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of things on your plate. All of them important. Spend time doing things you love with people you love. We'll keep your house super clean. Angie My Cleaner. Using non-toxic, chemical-free organic products to clean your home safely and effectively. I love that bunny. <laughs> That's really nice. It's a, <clears throat> it's a good blend. Duick is one of those things, like, I feel like when you're rigging, was that like a puppet rig with Duick? Uh, yeah. Or, or, yeah, um, I yeah, I mean, it was a full-on um, mm -hmm. character. We had it all split apart, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't a puppet I, thing. So yeah, Actually, no, it was a mix. It was a mix. A mix. So, yeah. I, th I thought I saw some morphing going on in there too. Yeah. So, uh, it. no, it, it worked out really well. It's a, the character works for frame by frame and for doing some rigging too. So it's nice. And, um, are the other characters then done in the same way? Uh, uh, yeah. So they yeah. were all built up. It was like, it was kind of fun to watch your, your rigging stuff that you were doing. Cause it was like, yeah, I've got, <laughs> I've got some nice complicated rigs and, um, I hadn't used Duick for a while, and so coming back to it, it was like, oh, my goodness, there's a lot of things that the thing can do right now. So um, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, it's it's grown a lot in the last kind of however. When did Duick come out? It was 10 years ago? It, yeah, because, like, it <laughs> was out before I was even, like, going to college. So <laughs> it's been around for quite a while. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely grown and added a lot, I think. What, what's hard about Duick though is I know like this much of it and it can do like this much <laughs> and there's all these buttons that I still don't know what they do. Um, but if you don't have Duick and you don't do character rigging, you should still have it because there are, are a lot of other tools in there that are great like automating um, like rolling or spring actions or some other keyframing tools in there that are really handy to have. So yeah. recommend it. Yeah, I mean the, the more complicated the rig is, it just takes a lot longer to set up. I mean, just there's a lot of little things you got to put in there. And then some of the stuff that was going on with Dusty uh, to get the apron to flow right, you know, I had to like put it in there and 
animate it separately from everything so that everything will work right, you know, so. Yeah, I think my problem with rigging is sometimes I, I, I don't think that way where I'm like, okay, I have to make this a separate thing. I'm just like, you know, manually do it. And I'm like, how can I make everything part of one rig that can work for any possible scenario? And then I, you know, kill myself over days trying to get it to work and then I give up and cry under my desk. So. <laughs> You build a massive rig that gets too hard to use. It yeah, <clears throat> or it goes slow and yeah. And sometimes simpler is just better. Like just and multiple rigs too. If you have different types of, of animation, is okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to have one rig to do everything. So. I just have one other question, and it, it, it's from an After Effects from a long time ago when using Duke rigs. But um, whenever I was using um, like a time remapping, mm -hmm. I found that. I always had to like have things instead of just being for one frame, I'd have to put in like a second or something <laughs> um, because it wouldn't always go to the precise frame when I was animating, you know, and it's, you're using hold frames on those, but I don't know if anybody ever experienced that. I didn't have any problems with this project, but um, I did this big, huge project a while ago and that was always a problem. So um, I don't know if that made sense, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you're saying that um, like, if you had say like an image sequence that you're re time remapping, and you had each image or each uh, image that you want to be just one frame. It's sometimes hard to get it to hit the right one. To land on the right one, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so it would, so you'd have to stretch it out over. I, I think mm -hmm. I did like ten frames or something like that, and then you may try to hit it in the middle, and then it seemed to work. But it was it was frustrating to work with. Yeah, I can imagine. I think I mean I've seen that when there's like frame rate mismatches sometimes. Like if I have uh, I could like say a, a thirty frame per second sequence and I even time remapping in like a 24 frame sequence sometimes mm -hmm. yeah it can be <clears throat> you can get those like in between frames that then After Effects has to pick and sometimes it picks the one that you didn't think it should um, so I don't know if that was the case or uh, I do remember a bug too a couple versions ago with After Effects like F muscle memory I don't know which actually button which button it actually is but uh, when you can scroll and scrub or uh, move up and down by like the fraction, not the, like the whole. And used to be able to do that by frame, but then uh, it was backwards. So like normally you hold this button down, you can go like, you know, a 10th of a unit or whatever. And it should go like every frame. And this one went like 10 seconds instead of one. I was like, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong, but apparently After Effects thinks I am. Um, but time remapping, I think in general can be kind of finicky and hard to deal with. So, but I mean, there's also nothing wrong with, you know, finding those methods that work for you and going 10 frames, you still have a good unit to, you know, know what you're going to hit and just aim for the middle and hope After Effects can't screw up. So I'm going to uh, say at this point, um, I think we're done with, with reels. And so I'm wondering if anybody has any other things that they'd like to show and or tell about After Effects related, not I see people thinking. <laughs> I know it's hard when we've all like shown a bunch of stuff already. Um, I'm going to actually share something that uh, I just ran. I was telling Tara about this earlier. I don't know if I was being lazy or clever um <laughs> but let me pop this open so i'm i was telling uh tara that i am not great at drawing <laughs> and we have a meeting we have a shoot in a couple like the end of next month and we're uh going to be figuring out how to put the set together in a psych wall stage we will have to build you know a wall and put some stuff in <clears throat> and try and draw like okay this is how we want the frame to go together and i'm realizing like I am terrible at proportion. I cannot draw a person <laughs> very well. And I have to figure out like, will all of this fit and how will my camera angle work? And that's, an that's when I remembered that um, Cinema 4D has this wonderful content library that has all this stuff. So here's my uh, speaker guy over here. And I got my, my set all uh, taken care of. I'll zoom out here. <clears throat> so I was using this then to uh, just, I just grabbed, this isn't the couch that I, that I know what it's going to look like, but it's kind of a couch in the right, uh, in the right size. And I knew roughly the height of our, our talent. 
So I'm like, okay, I think I need 24 feet of space, like 12 here, 12 here. There's an eight by 16 flat that we can probably construct. And I, I think I can, I can make this work. And then I exported this and drew right on top of it to pretend that uh, I knew what I was doing all along. So that's my, <laughs> my, my lazy hack of the day to, cause I can't draw. <laughs> you sit in the 4D to make references for everything. Well, if it helps you plan out your your camera, just mm -hmm. all that stuff too. That's yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's all. That's always the thing, right? Because this is uh, like, especially since we have to build this wall behind everything. Like, I don't know how big we need that to be. Like, if it needs to be twenty five feet, like that's not going to work. Like, so I was futzing with it until I found like, okay, I think sixteen is manageable. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was trying to put everything within the the rough uh, measurements from the sound stage that I remember. And uh, it will help. And then we'll find out what our director says uh, and our producer says tomorrow when I talk to them. And they tell me I'm crazy and that we're not going to build all of this stuff. And, like, but it will look cool. Did you try like different lenses and stuff? <laughs> yeah, I did. So I went between, so I set the sensor size because we're shooting on an Aerie. So I set it to a Super 35 uh, sensor and then tried. Um, doing like a 50 millimeter lens, but that's going to put the camera too far away because it's going to be a teleprompter rig. Uh, so it landed on like a, a 35 and then I just like moved everything back and forth until I found like, okay, the edges of the flat are like this far away of, you know, for, we have like that much room to the edge of the frame. So it's going to be tight, but we'll, we'll make it work. Cool. Yeah. That's a good, good way to test things. <clears throat> yeah. I wish I, knew enough about Cinema 4D beyond just like grabbing things. And I mean, I'm, I'm glad I knew where to go to set my lens sizes and uh, <laughs> my camera and everything. Um, but it would be a lot of fun to like, instead of now drawing on top of this to get the stuff I actually wanted in there to be a better modeler and be able to uh, like model some stuff roughly how I think it should look and put some plants in there and get everything the right color that I wanted. And, but for now, just a really crude sketch that I'm not going to share. That's for our production crew's eyes only. Uh, <laughs> that uh, it will get the point across, hopefully. So I will have to say though that uh, Cinema 4D is a lot faster than I remember it being after not using it really for a while. It has improved a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Grayscale Gorilla, if you're doing a lot with lenses and you want to make sure uh, if you're doing something for square frames for like, mm -hmm. yeah, they have a bunch of scripts now within their uh, Gorilla, Grayscale Gorilla Plus that uh, will automatically change lenses and stuff for you and set all that up and keep your aspect ratio right and not crop things off in a weird way because those black bars that are on there, if you don't set the camera right and match like what the crop bars are, it, it's not going to be actually accurate. So. <laughs> So, well, that's good to know. Yeah, he can switch between prime lenses and all kinds of stuff on there. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I already had to deal with like doing different croppings uh, for, uh, it was an interview piece that we did remote. So we actually worked with our production, same production partner again. We got this kit put together that we can, you know, FedEx out, you know, it's a, it's a laptop, um, a separate camera and a light. <clears throat> and we just zoom in and they hit the record button and we can actually like, have a, an interview with them. But so we did all this thing, we shoot at 1080p. And uh, then like two months later, they're like, oh, we really, uh, we want to cut this down some more. Like, great, we cut it down. Like, okay, here's our delivery list. That's like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. It's like, you realize it's like not that great of footage. And now you want me to crop it to be 1080 by 1920. And this guy, so now it's like crop like this on this guy's face. It's like, <laughs> Hope everyone on TikTok likes that. But right. yeah, you got to plan for that stuff ahead, and that's why I thought it was nice. Yeah, let it set up and figure that. Out. Yeah, I'll see. Hopefully, no one comes back with this and says, "Now we want this on TikTok." I'm like, sorry, no. <laughs> it's widescreen and widescreen only. What about a sizzle for TikTok? <clears throat> I, I'm not are we not friends anymore now? Paul? I, I don't know who you Did are. Did I just end our friendship? <laughs> The, the two things <laughs> that if you, if you know me, you don't mention around me are sizzle reels and uh, whiteboard videos. Th those two things are not allowed 
anywhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I have to make so many sizzle reels, they, they get several requests a year for clients that we have to make our sizzle reel for them. And I mean, it's not my favorite thing to do, obviously, but it works and they like them. So I guess I'll just keep keep on doing that until we hire an editor who can do that for me instead. But I'm not holding my breath for that either. So. <laughs> So while we're still kind of like tangentially on the topic of reels, is there like any questions or any like thoughts or ideas that people want to share regarding reels or maybe like how you prep for reels and how that goes into prepping for a portfolio? Just just open chat if you guys want. If not, that's fine too. I'm kind of curious to hear people's take on especially length uh, because a while ago, I felt like it was like, okay, two minutes or under, and you, you're you in a good place. And now I feel like it's now you got to be a minute or under. And I'm wondering, like, if it's going to continually get shorter and, like, nope, 15 seconds is all you got, or if it's going to kind of settle somewhere or if it's going to bounce back. Curious people's opinions on that. I've heard guess, it. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, it might depend on <clears throat> who's watching the reel. Are you, are you, is it the yeah. end customer? Or is it like a production person? I mean, they, they could be different, different sure. things. So, and then specifically who your customer might be. I mean, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. You can always cut different reels for different purposes too, if you're wanting to show yeah. a banded version or whatever. But if you're, I've heard if you're fresh out of school and you don't have a ton of footage, shorter is better. Just even if it's 30 seconds or whatever, just put your best stuff. Mm -hmm. the, to get it out and yes there nothing over a minute nowadays nobody wants to short it. and you know TikTok and instagram and everything else everybody wants to watch something super short now you also then... anybody's on the fence of hiring you you can show them something longer if they're interested but to get people to pay attention to you the shorter shorter is better yeah <clears throat> i guess how do you see um I get related to that. Like, how do you see, uh, I guess, again, it might depend on the audience and, uh, you know, who's doing the viewing, but like, do you see a reel as like your foot in the door or do you see that as like, you have to get as much in there as you can because you don't know who will see it? I used to think that way, like put every decent sample in there, but um, I don't think most people care that much about being <laughs> you know a huge variety and one thing i've been doing is on my web page where i put the reel like every project you say okay it's good but there's this one part which i felt like it could be better or whatever and i'll take still frames that i think are a good representation and i've noticed actually like buck and a lot of places are putting a whole series of still frames from the projects underneath the actual video for people who aren't going to take time to watch the whole thing, you still get a good sense of what's what's in there, and you don't have to spend a minute watching it all. Does anyone still create real breakdowns, or am I the only person in that camp? Like a breakdown because, sheet to physically like give to people, or a PDF that they could download that like talks about each shot, mm. like what programs you used, what you were responsible for. I guess say like as somebody who looks at reels to hire freelancers at times, mm -hmm. I <clears throat> if somebody takes the time to even just like in the Vimeo description or whatever, like to say like, um, you know, this is for X clients and I did compositing, or I, this is for X client and I did the uh, the animation and design and basically everything. Like that's great to see because we've also been we haven't been burned, but it's definitely been apparent uh, from looking at somebody's reel and then talking to them, finding out that they're overrepresenting their role uh, on a much larger team and being I, I feel like I can forgive that for somebody that's starting out because you don't know uh, you know you want to you want to be as uh, big in the room as possible right uh, but you can't get away with that for too long <laughs> because it can be kind of apparent when like if you get hired for a job based on skills that you don't have that's gonna be a problem so I like them I, I, I haven't done it for my reel, but like for my portfolio piece, you know, filmmaking such a collaborative effort. I'm an independent producer. So sometimes I'm shooting, sometimes I'm editing, sometimes I'm doing graphics, sometimes I'm doing all three. 
so I, I in my portfolio piece, I, I usually like if I'm showing a case, showcasing something, I'll make sure I say what my role is there so that I because, um, you know, I, I don't want to like, you know, anger other people <laughs> that I work for either. You know, it's like, you know, that's that's not good to burn bridges and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And one other thing kind of, I guess, kind of related to that, too. Um, a, a while back, I was uh, an, in a Twitter conversation about Reels, and Ryan Summers, um, who was by Otternod, uh <clears throat> was talking about Reels. And he brought up an interesting point about the idea of like a demo Reel versus a show Reel. And uh, it, was, it was one of those things that like caught me off guard because it, I just feel like I always heard those terms interchangeably. But then the idea when he was describing that, breaking that down of like a demo reel is, is like, uh, right, I'm going to get this backwards probably now, but um, like a, a demo reel is demonstrating what you want to do, I think, versus a show reel is showing like the work that you've made and uh, like this is what you're like capable of, but there's like a more aspirational uh, slant to like a demo reel. So maybe you're adding more things that are tests or are um, things that you want to do more of and not necessarily representative of just the stuff that you've been doing that you maybe want to get away from. And I'm curious about uh, if anyone has feelings on that or if it's kind of a distinction that's not necessarily valid because I don't know how many of us have all that time to put into you know, making new things that we want to make more of in hopes that somebody will hire us to make those things. I've never thought of that in that distinction or in that regard. Like my experience has always been those terms were interchangeable. So it's interesting mm -hmm. to put that lens to it. Yeah, I've definitely put things in the demo reel or show reel that weren't real projects that were more what I'd like to be doing, but I, mm -hmm. I always considered them interchangeable too. I had never heard the distinction either. I have a whole list of things I would like to do for that. <laughs> but work full-time doing compositing animation and then I get a bunch of freelance jobs and pretty much have no time or life. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's why when you mentioned before making different reels, I was like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I don't. I, that's just what I've heard, you know, <laughs> for different purposes. I would do that myself. Yeah. That's I, I shot reel that has like, you know, scatter shot everything in there because I yeah. just didn't have I would say though, like at least separating out, like like Peter, like you're saying, if you're, you're an interdisciplinary, you know, creator, um, at least separating out, like okay, here's my animation reel, here's my uh, my DP reel, here's my directing or editing, like at least having those uh, <clears throat> those skill sets that are kind of further apart separated. Um, I could see like <clears throat> I think putting like compositing and motion design and like 3D together because those you especially in like a relatively smaller market like Minneapolis uh, and Twin Cities area, um, you know, you're, you're probably going to get hired to do many of those things on one job, right? Uh, we're not fortunate enough to be at a place where like, you're only going to get hired to do the compositing on this, uh, <clears throat> this team of like 20 people for giant ant to, you know, do some style work, but at least separating out like, yeah, live action and animation, things like that. Yeah, that, that is what I do actually. So I have, I do have like kind of an animation visual effects reel, um, which has a little bit of motion design, kind of covers everything. But <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I have one for like just overall production stuff because that you know, for my clients to see that, and then for specific people, I also have like a cinematography reel. So I just just showcasing that, and that's that's more of a here, just take a look at this. I don't necessarily, you know, put that up as a main thing. So it's more targeted. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the hardest uh, reels to put together though is an editing reel, because you can't showcase editing in a reel. I feel like what you're really doing is saying, "Look at all the pretty footage that people trusted me with." <laughs> and I feel like with editing, especially, it's one of those things where if it's done well, it's not apparent right away mm -hmm. because it's just seamless and you don't even realize what's happening. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Star wipe, star wipe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> clock. Don't forget clock wipes too. Yeah. Underutilized. Now, I remember, um, like thinking back to college, we in one of my editing courses, uh, 
our teacher had us bring in like examples of what we thought was good editing from a film. And this one person brought something in <clears throat> and I saw my teacher like kind of looking at it and then she's like, okay, writing stuff down. I'm like, okay, she's either like really interested in this or like the student's gonna get like a talking to later or something. And then it was over and our teacher said, said you know, how many cuts were in that scene? And the student was like, oh God, I'm like 12 to 15. And she's like, there were four. <laughs> <laughs> it was just one of those things like like editing is you know about those choices and it's uh it can be invisible to the point where you think there's more editing going on when there isn't but it's just letting stuff play out and uh yeah it's it's a great skill to have that i wish i i knew better but are most people here do you consider yourself generalists or specialists mm -hmm. in something don't get me started, Brian. I have this whole angularist theory that I'm working right. on. All right. Another meeting, another topic. <laughs> no, I'd say like for me, definitely like a generalist, at least as far as motion design is concerned. Um, I mean, I guess kind of post-production a little bit in general, but uh, definitely wouldn't say like, I'm just a 2D animator or, you know, I, I feel like there's not enough. Um, I, I mean, I guess it's different for everybody and for every market, but uh, for me, it never seemed like there was enough work to just like commit to one like tiny little area of, of post or motion design to, to make that work. I'm a journalist as well. I mean, I'm hired right now, full time compositor, but everything else I do is throughout the years has been like, oh, a little of this, a little of that, a little of everything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jim. Looks like you're going to go. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm actually retired, but nine years retired. 20 years ago, I would have loved if you had a group like this, because that's when I really needed you guys <laughs> to, uh, to help with the process. Um, so I've been nine years retired out of corporate, and probably the last project I did that, would, that I used to After Effects was like eight years ago. So it's uh, been really out of it officially. But <laughs> since you now have this group going, I feel I've since I wanted it for so long, I have to be here just to support you guys. <laughs> well, we appreciate you here. Yeah, I don't know if like user groups were so much a thing in like the the early two uh, thousands or um, like definitely not in the nineties. Um, like After Effects was was young at that point. It's what well, we're twenty eight years old now. I think something like that. Can't remember this group the, is? This group is? No, no, I'm sorry, After Effects oh. itself. Oh, oh. <laughs> Not, oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, the group itself, uh, we actually were talking with uh, Scott Cornell, who's the former founder and, uh, well, always the founder, but former manager. And we think it was 2009 Nine. was yeah. when the group officially started from its humble beginnings and still humble ongoings. <laughs> yeah, back in the early days where I was trying to learn uh, After Effects, this would have been real handy <laughs> to, to have. Yeah, I think early but, on there were um, some, there was a 3D group. I'm trying to remember which, if it was specifically one one thing. Josh Purple was involved in that a lot, I think. Mm. Um, and uh, there was a, a Final Cut, you know, group a long time ago. You know, you know way before Final Cut 10, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whatever happened to Final Cut? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody use it anymore? <laughs> I, I own it, but. I, I hear the people who do use it, though, really like it, so. I heard it had its growing pains starting at 10, but it's really cool. Yeah. It's a solid tool again, but I haven't used it, so I can't say. <laughs> I have a coworker who uses it regularly, and he really enjoys it. I think it's kind of lame that they're keeping it Mac computer gated, um, and that, like me, who works on a PC, like I can't collaborate on my coworker with this editing project. Like he has to go through this whole pipeline of exporting a video so I can see it and then talk to him and make revisions. And I don't know. Like I think that's just like you're you're excluding potentially half of a market here by limiting it to just a Mac. I don't know. I'm trying to think about like people who. And I don't want to generalize Tara about PC users, but mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I feel like especially in like the motion design field, uh, like and especially 3D, like the people who are going to like choose PCs over Macs probably don't want anything Apple on their computer. It is I mean a hunch I have. 
like I use a PC, but like yeah. Apple has a lot of great things going for it. Like it's like a lot sturdier, a lot more like withstanding. Uh, I like the built-in screen recording and the built-in screen capture. With a PC, I have to download a separate program or app just to record something. Like, I don't know, that's lame. <laughs> I was I was a hardcore Mac user for decades and just made the switch about three years ago. So I don't know. I'd love to go back to Mac, but it's just I, they seem to have given up on the pro market somewhat. I think they're finally getting back to it. I've been using Mac forever too, and I just I had to get on PC recently for this compositing job and stuff, but uh, so I use both all the time, which makes my muscle memory, <laughs> of, you know. But, but definitely, uh, I prefer the Mac. I'd rather be on the Mac. But, yeah, I'm on a PC looking at it most of the day, and you know. I, I think it's just a testament to how great After Effects is because it can go on a Mac <laughs> or a PC. Very it's true. Cheap to put together. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now we have whatever the the M1 Apple Silicon Macs are going to become, and I'm curious how that's going to shake out. Like Is this once... going to be a larger version of their trash can computers that were like this big and were just cylindrical tubes? I, <laughs> I think that was a mistake. Um, <laughs> like I had a coworker who had one and had nothing but problems. Like the graphics cards would constantly like have issues and flake out and. Uh, no, but the so far, I mean, I don't know anyone that's doing like full on, like, motion design or three D work with the Apple Silicon Max. But you know, there's rumors that they're going to have like a thirty two core Mac Pro with uh, on the Silicon. I'm curious what it's going to look like. Um, Spicy. <clears throat> yeah. Probably be a smaller cheese grater than new Mac Pro. <laughs> Right, like that—that that makes me wonder too. Like, why did they put all that work into making that thing when it's probably not going to be around much longer in that form? Like, I—I I can't imagine the M1 Mac would be that big. Yeah, uh, just to keep some pros happy along the way, because they're really <laughs> true. And there's a lot of a lot of like audio people or editing people that you know, have a lot of cards that they want to put into it, so mm -hmm. it'll still live on form factor in that way. Unfortunately, I'm one of those people that has one of those. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wasn't too happy to hear about, you know, the, I, I am happy for the silicon. I mean, you know, the new silicon, M1 and everything, and MX or whatever they're going to call the pro mm -hmm. chip. But I wish mine was going to be upgradable to that, but it won't be. So, you know, yeah, I'll be swapping it out for something else. Or what, but. Well, look at it as all the, the work you're able to get done in the meantime on that machine. So, yeah, not for my real job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I work on a PC during the day. Yeah, time at night, I get to work on it. <laughs> Got to pay the bills. Right. Well, well, I think we're kind of winding things down. Um, and before we kind of let everyone go, we just do want to say that the. Uh, the next meeting that we're going to have, the, the topic is to be determined. Uh, we're still working out the details. Uh, our original plan fell through, unfortunately. Well, I shouldn't say it fell through. It got delayed. Delayed. Um, delayed. So uh, <clears throat> we're still working out that, but it will be in, what is it, four weeks from now on June 17th? That uh, was the day, June 17th. June 17th, another Thursday. Um, however, you know, it's summer. It's going to be... Uh, nice out so it no uh no hard feelings if you decide to go you know to sit outside at a lake or in a park or uh in a patio somewhere and uh, enjoy the the summer sun uh but that will be our next uh still digital meetup i think we we did commit for the rest of the year that we are still going to be doing digital and we'll see uh what 2022 brings and uh my joke is that i hope it's not 2022 the sequel and you know it's <laughs> even worse but because the sequel is never as good as the original so what, what would that mean you know t2 was pretty good i was gonna say terminator True. 2 <laughs> that, that that is the exception i think to <laughs> cool um yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah someday we'll have to do like a maybe that could be a topic someday of just like talking about 
motion design and films and our favorite moments. And... Side note, I have a spreadsheet where I've like pulled different like lists and research of like iconic films or films that changed up like industry standards. Mm -hmm. And I watch maybe two a year because life, but <laughs> I finally watched 1984's Splash recently with Tom Hanks because that like led to a few different changes with film techniques and boy howdy does that movie not hold up <laughs> <laughs> yeah who uh who's the mermaid in that one i sure remember her daryl hannah yeah was it daryl hannah yeah yeah and then i think it's uh mr was it eugene levy or dan levy um was the like kooky evil scientist who's like the antagonist of the film I haven't seen it in a long time. It, it doesn't yeah. hold up. You don't need to see it again, Todd. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, is, um, <laughs> we'll leave you with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah's Splash. And you can go take a look at that if you, if you so choose. <laughs> um, but we'll see everybody online in the various uh, communities. And we will hopefully see you in about four weeks on June 17th. So thanks for coming out, everybody. Thank you for everyone who uh, shared both Reimagined and uh, New Reels. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks. Bye. <clears throat>